Father, we come before you with this request that today you will open our eyes to see the deep things of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. That the things that are hidden from the eyes and the minds and the understanding of casual readers of the Bible, you'll open to our minds in Jesus' name. Amen. And as you teach us what you reveal to us today in your word, you'll prepare us for whatever you want us to do in reaching out to the lost around us and beyond in Jesus' name. Amen. We trust that your spirit will enlighten us and give us the truth. And for that, we are praising your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have already seen a study of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. The church at Antioch coming together in prayer, ministering to the Lord. And I told you that means loving the Lord, praising the Lord, sacrificing to the Lord, just offering spiritual sacrifices to the Lord, stepping into the ministry of their priesthood, the priesthood of the believer. And we've seen that church responding to the call of the Holy Ghost. As the Holy Spirit spoke, said, Pray it unto me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. We've seen them in that church, continuing the fasting after that word came out, and they laid hands on Barnabas and Saul, and they went out. As they went out, they went out in response to the call of the Holy Ghost, and they sailed to Cyprus. They have been to Salamis also, and they had done what the Lord sent them out to do. At Salamis, they preached the word of God. But today, as we come to verses 6 to 12, we see the conflict between the power of God and the attempt of the devil to hinder the preaching of the gospel. And we see Christ in his power and presence with his own disciples and apostles. We see him defeating the devil and the agents of Satan. Verses 6 to 12, Pay attention as I read to you. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elamas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. I've told you before that as we come to the Acts of the Apostles, even though we're reading the recorded history of the early church, we're not just looking at history. We're looking at pertinent, practical principles of the Word of God that every believer ought to know, ought to understand. Because we're told that the days in which we live, the days are evil. We're also told in the scriptures that in the last days, perilous time shall come. And we're told that as a result of the perilous days of the last time, the activities of the devil will become so high that the uninformed and the one that is a novice in the things of the Lord will practically be able to do nothing in the days in which we live. And right from the Old Testament, we've seen the powers of darkness waging war against the move of the Spirit of God to proclaim the truth. And in the New Testament, we have seen 
the powers of darkness uh, in a subtle way, but in a definite way, moving so as to oppose or hinder the preaching and the progress of the gospel. As Barnabas and Saul came to pay for us, a false prophet, who also was a sorcerer, sought to hinder the preaching and the progress of the gospel. And as I've read to you, you've seen the power of God's spirit that Paul exercised in spiritual authority to silence that opposer, sorcerer, and the opposition. And uh, the end result is that the deputy believed when he saw the power of God in manifestation in Paul's ministry. Now, as we come to these few verses we're reading today, it's important for us to understand that Christian work is not a work for a novice. There are times that young people have got saved and perhaps they have even got sanctified and they have got baptized in the Holy Ghost and the experiences of the Lord are fresh with them. But they neither have experience nor maturity. And they feel because they are born again, because they know a few verses from Exodus, from John, from Matthew, and uh, because they know Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, they feel now they are ready. They are ready to go out and preach the gospel. They do not need any leadership. They do not need any instruction. They do not need um, any supervision at all. They just want to reach out and do the work. And they say now uh, the field is white for harvest. Let's reach out and get it done. Well, it's not as simple as that, my brother, my sister. At other times, we found some university students. Uh, they met the Lord at university. And um, if you know university students at all, they do not have time to study the Bible because there is a lot for them to study in the academics. But uh, every Sunday when they come together in the student fellowship, somebody comes and he talks to them with youthful exuberance and he puts uh, their, emotion, their emotion up and he tells them, we the young people, we are the people that will do the work. The prophet has said, a little child shall lead them and let's go out, let's reach out. And during their long vacation, they are, you know, ganging up together, they want to reach out and they have mapped all the countries in Africa together. During the long vacation, just three months, they are, they are very sure that they are going to win the whole of Africa for Christ. But you know, my brother, my sister, it's not as easy as that. There are times to find people in a local church, a local assembly like this, and they have got saved. And perhaps uh, during the Sunday fellowship or during the Thursday Miracle Revival Hour, they have um, seen that uh, there are some individuals from the same neighborhood, from the same uh, tribe in a particular state. Uh, they've seen one another and uh, they, are, they meet together and they say, let's take this thing to our tribe. Because, uh, you know, if this can be happening in Lagos, we know that this can happen in our tribe. And uh, one of them said, but uh, do we have experience know uh, what God does, uh, you know, through one man, he can do through another man. And uh, well, all right, then they start uh, meeting together. And before you know, over a weekend, they're going to a particular village. And as they're getting to that village, uh, they're encouraging themselves and they're saying, oh yes, we can do it. We're going to preach the full gospel. Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, and Jesus can bless you in a mighty way. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so they go out. And the very first night, they get out into that village. The very first night, the powers of darkness, they know nothing about the opposition of witches and wizards. They know nothing of uh, the powers of darkness that control villages, control, literally control the chiefs in villages, control local government areas, control whole states and whole nations. They do not understand the depths of the vision and revelation of Daniel. When, uh, that, uh, when Angel said that uh, the prince of Persia withstood me all those 21 days and, uh, and uh, just another angel came to deliver me, they know nothing about that. And then all through that night, they are battered, they are tortured, they are tormented. Evil spirits just uh, uh, come heavily upon the places where they have gone. They are not able to win any soul. They themselves are confused. They themselves are scattered and terrible things happen to them. And from that time, they begin to see that uh, in the night dreams and also the oppressions at night, very many things take place. They come back to the church and they're never quite the same again. 
because they do not understand that when you're reaching out with the power of the Lord, you're reaching out and uh, you're going against uh, the powers that be, against principalities and power, and you're delivering the captives of Satan away from his son. They do not know it is really a spiritual warfare, a terrible battle. But you know, Paul the Apostle and Barnabas, they have been in the church at Antioch. They were not novices. They were not house leaders. They were not area leaders. That's the lower part of the ladder. The way of the apostle is way up the ladder. And it takes an house fellowship leader some time to climb to the point of apostleship and to the point of a prophet, to the point of an evangelist or a seasoned, matured, experienced teacher of the word of God. They were not, uh, Paul was not a zonal leader, my brother. And Barnabas was not, uh, a, you know, a visitation leader. He was a man of God. And the Holy Ghost said, while the praying and the fasting was going on, and the Holy Ghost saw what was beyond, in the field beyond, he said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. There is an assignment, a special assignment, a deep, great work I have for them. And uh, they started. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, you know what it says? John went with them. Now, this was John, John Mark, that wrote the gospel according to St. Mark, much, much earlier. But you know what happened in verse 13? Look at verse 13. First of all, look at verse 5. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the, synagogues of the, in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. You know, when the Holy Ghost uh, spoke out and said, Separate me, Barnabas and Paul or Saul, for the work I have, I've called them. Then John, John Mark, a young man, thinking it will be a wonderful adventure to follow these men of God. If Paul can do it, I can do it. If Barnabas can do it, I can do it. And he followed them. And they said, All right, come along. Come along. And in verse 13, now when Paul and his company loose from Paphos, they came to Paga in Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. You know, John just said, bye-bye. If this is what we're going to see on the journey, if this is the meaning of a missionary work, I think I'll go back home and pray again. <laughs> I'm telling you, this thing is not for novice. It's not for a deacon. It's not for somebody that rose up Sunday morning and answered the questions at the Sunday school and said, well, didn't I know the Bible? They said, uh, who can recite Exodus chapter 3, chapter 23, verse 2? And I raised up my hand and I recited it and the Sunday school teacher said, well done, you must have been studying the Bible. And because of that, he ran and went into missionary world. You know, he will run back. Or because of that, he goes into a village with the natives and the tribal people that are very deep from the ancient or from the ancient days, from ancient time, that have been very deep in sorcery and witchcraft and evil spirits and, and demonic spirits. And they are very deep in medium. And, uh, you know, it reaches out like that. You know, that's why we tell our young people who are in the church, area leaders, zona leaders, the patient, it's good to study the Bible until the church would have matured you and trained you and developed you. And then very easily we can say, now brother, you are ready, go to such and such a place. And while you are in such and such a place, because you are sent out by the church, the church will be following you up, the church will be praying for you. And the victory you'll be winning in the day and in the night, you'll not be able to know the reason why. Because there is a church backing you up, supporting you and praying for you. Now, uh, they, they went. And as I've read the story to you, I'll read it again to you. You'll now begin to appreciate uh, the passage itself from verse 6. When they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was by Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elamas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, who stood then, seeing, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, 
O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now look up here. Can you as a deacon, a young believer, a novice, can you go into a new territory? And then you will meet with the governor or the deputy of that territory. And then while you are talking to that governor, and then there is a, a full-time worker with that governor that has a, a maybe a, a, a high position with that a governor who has been serving that governor, who had been a medium for that governor, and then you just turn away and face that uh, person, and then you say, oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. Remember, Paul was a stranger there. He didn't know anybody there except the God of heaven. A novice can't do that. Because you have a combination of the word of knowledge and the word of authority and the word of power and the working of miracle and the gift of faith all operating at the same time because of the gift of God in the life of Paul the Apostle and then he said right now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee and thou shalt be blind not seeing the sun for a season and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand then the deputy when he saw what was done he didn't drive them out and say, uh, you have made uh, my worker blind. That's my personal assistant. You've made him blind. And then lock them up. Oh no, that deputy saw authority. That governor saw authority. And when he saw what was done, he believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now let's go step by step and look at the preaching to Sergius. The perversion of the sorcerer the punishment of the sorcerer and then the persuasion of sergeants. First, the preaching, verses 6 and 7. When they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, which was, the, was with the deputy of the country, the deputy, the governor of the country, Sergius Paulus a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. The Holy Ghost had sent these two people out, Barnabas and Saul. And as they went out, they knew that they were assigned a particular work, an important work, and it was a work of preaching. In verse 5 we have read, when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God. And now again in verse 7, we are told, Somebody called for them, desiring to hear the word of God. As Barnabas and Saul went out, they did only what the Holy Ghost had sent them out to do. They did not give any attention to business or politics. How many times we have found that many people that are zealous and they say they want to work for the Lord. Then perhaps they go to a particular state within Nigeria here. When they left Lagos, they said they were going to work for God. And uh, perhaps the people of God here even encouraged them and told them, well, this can be done in that area, this can be done in that area. When you get there, they start to handle the work of God, and then they get there and they start a business. But you know, Paul and uh, Barnabas did not do that. Other people will go into a particular country, and instead of focusing attention on the preaching of the gospel they went for, they get involved with the politics of the land. Other people get involved with education or sanitation or they want to build a dispensary or they want to do some other things that are just uh, social. But you know, Barnabas and Saul, they just concentrated on the work of the Lord. They knew that they had a special call upon them. And it wasn't just by their wishing to go out that they went out. It wasn't for adventure. It wasn't for sightseeing. It wasn't to go and please themselves. They knew that the Lord called them for a special assignment, and that special assignment they concentrated on. And neither business nor politics, education nor any other thing, any other social thing, they arrested their attention. They preached the word. And if you have any opportunity to minister the gospel, if you are sent out by the church, 
if the Holy Ghost through the churches are telling you go and get this done when you get there preach the word avoid any distraction or diversion do only what Christ has commanded and do all that the Holy Ghost has assigned that will be done let's come back home you've been sent to the various zones to do some work and we have picked you out. You didn't pick yourself to be a zonal leader, to be an area leader, or to be um, a house fellowship leader, or visitation leader, or any other work we have assigned for you to do by the leading of the Holy Ghost. You know many people that have led their assignments, the work, the church has said, this is the work to do. They just leave that alone. That's not enough for them. The preaching of the word, the leading of souls into salvation, that is not enough. They must uh, overnight become a prophet or overnight become a great evangelist or they just become a commercial businessman and they go from house to house begging for money. You know such a person because of left the assignment, the real assignment, it will not be surprising if the Holy Ghost just leaves you because you grieve the Holy Ghost when you leave the assignment you were given. And then you go to do other things. You get yourself concerned about other things. Are there not people that are assigned to take care of men? And all they do now is take care of women. And the real thing they were supposed to do, taking care of the men and visiting them and helping them and preaching to them and counseling them, they leave all those things. And all they want to do now is just, you know, visit the women and pray for them and lay hands on them. You know, when you go astray like that, it's very uh, obvious why the Spirit of God will leave you. Other people are, are to be in charge of the house fellowship. But now because we have uh, IFL and these IFL people are rich and wealthy and influential, instead of these serial leaders and house fellowship leaders doing their normal work, they are, tr they are going about to, you know, the IFL people because they want a cup of rice, they want some money, you know such people you will lose any little anointing you had before you cannot uh, you know keep on be deceptive like that dishonest like that and uh, going astray like that and still keep the power and the presence of the holy ghost you know it's the same thing uh, at home and also abroad if you are sent out to another state state leader or any other thing you are supposed to do there and you deviate from the work you were assigned or you've gone on missionary work and you deviate from the work you were assigned, eventually the presence and the power of the Lord will leave. But you know, Paul and uh, Barnabas, they kept on the work they were supposed to do. They were very sensitive to the touch of the Lord, to the leading of the Lord. And uh, sometimes uh, people wonder, people say, uh, what's the secret behind uh, this uh, deeper Christian life ministry? Well, many things, but one of them is this. Far back in the 70s, I had the call of God. And I knew the voice of the Lord. And I knew what he wanted me to do, step by step. It was slow to people. It was gradual to people. But step by step, I just followed a step at a time. Of course, I, I, I can't tell you how many letters I've received. You know, to become, to come and be a chairman of a particular uh, thing. And I look at that letter, I say, no, that's not the call of God for me. Other people want me to come and they want me to be uh, the fundraiser uh, for a particular project. I look at that letter and I ask the Lord, he says, no, that's, not, your, that's my, not my call for you. Other people want me to travel around very many parts of the world and get this done and get that done. And I look for the uh, voice of the and he says, no, that's not the assignment. And in all these years, we just follow the assignment. We just follow the assignment. That's why the power of the Lord is here. And it is because Paul and Barnabas, they followed the assignment. They kept on with the work. They were never tired. You know the Monday Bible study? We keep at it. And at the second session, even when there are not as many as you are in the first session, we keep at it. On Thursday, we keep at it. On Sunday, we keep at it. There are invitations that come that will invite me to come and do this and do that, that will make me popular all of a sudden. Just give me fame all of a sudden. But you know, we keep at the assignment. And it is because uh, we have some people that are faithful like that, like I have been faithful to the Lord. That's why the work is growing. But you know, if you are diverted and you leave the assignment God has given to you in the church, 
and you are concerned about other things in your own life you lose uh, the power of god the presence of god you'll not be productive anymore because what you are doing the lord has not sent you to do it but we thank god for paul we thank god for barnabas they did what the lord wanted them to do and this was it preach the word preach the word in second timothy chapter four second timothy chapter four verse two preach the word don't be a politician missionary preach the word you are not sent out to go and uh, look into a uh, city administration preach the word you are not told uh, you know to become a bodyguard for the governor of the state preach the word if you are a preacher of the word of God, if you are sent out to preach the word of God, concentrate on what the Holy Ghost has sent you out to do. Whether in this country or outside this country, if this church has been financing you, supporting you, and praying for you, and has sent you out by the leading of the Holy Ghost, preach the word. These are the last days. Many diversions are in various countries and in various tribes. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own law shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things and endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Now in Acts chapter 13, coming to verse 6. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus. Verse 8, but Hilamas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, who stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Here we have the perversion of the sorcerer. Now you remember when Philip went to Samaria? Immediately the gospel began to spread and began to go beyond the Jerusalem and Judea and it got into Samaria. Do you know whom um, Philip encountered? Simon the sorcerer. And you know when Paul and Barnabas uh, came to this place again, you know whom they encountered? Another sorcerer again. You remember what happened at Philippi when they were reaching out with gospel outreach again? A, a maid, a lady with a spirit of divination, you know it's there all the time. And uh, you know that when you go into new field, no matter where it is, whether Europe or America or Africa or Asia, now you think about this. All the evil spirits that Jesus cast out when he was in the world, you know they are not dead yet, they are still in the world. Because they have not gone into the pit yet, they have not gone into the abyss yet, because they told the Lord, are you going to torment us before the day, before our time? And they were pleading that he will not cast them into the deep. All Jesus could do was that he will say, come out of him and never come back to this particular person anymore. But then it says they went, uh, they were walking about, roaming about. And then if they cannot find a place, they'll come and check up if there was opened up for them again. All the evil spirits that were in the world, since the time of a Baal worship, they're still in the world. All the spirits of, the evil, of evil that were in the world, all those familiar spirits at the time of Ahab, they was, they're still in the world. Of uh, all the dark days, they're still in the world. It is because the light of the gospel is shining. That is why uh, you don't seem to understand what, that these things are there. But you get into villages and see. And uh, I have been to various parts of Nigeria. And in the early 70s, when we reached out, we've been to uh, River Stage, to Bendel Stage, to Anambra Stage. And I can tell you from personal experience, it were, if it were not for the power of God, some of us will not be doing what we're still doing today. In fact, I know some of the preachers of those days who preached, some of them, were, they were even ahead of me those days, but they didn't understand how to keep the power and the presence of God in them. I've had experiences that uh, sometimes when you hear some of these experiences, I, I, generally I don't talk about them, generally. 
because as a teacher of the word we're just to preach the word preach the word alone sometimes uh, uh, you sit just beside somebody just sitting not talking not even witnessing i mean in those uh, places in some of the tribes we have gone within this nigeria not even foreign land within this nigeria just sitting beside a person and you feel that heat you feel that power literally literally and uh, you feel like uh, you know those things getting into your muscles and uh, really pulling on it and you say what is all this if you didn't know what was going on and the speed controlling all that area you say well uh, maybe i'm just getting sick but uh, if you feel like that you don't understand what's going on and you have to you know just take authority over that thing I did tell you this before, I've uh, confronted people before that while we were just closing our eyes and uh, the man just put his two hands together, we were praying and uh, he just touched my eyeball with his hands and his sensation went through that eyeball immediately. And, but thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, if I didn't know what was going on, I'll say, oh Lord, what is that? And this man was taller than myself, very tall taller than myself and he was putting his two hands like this in front well when we close our eyes and we're praying and we're all standing up and he bent down and he used uh, you know those hands to touch my eyeballs and the sensation and the vibration and everything that went into my eyeballs i knew what it meant thank god for authority thank god for power thank god for the blood of jesus christ and uh, you know we've been to uh, various some countries that uh, you know you're sleeping at night all around there and you just know that cloud and that suppression very heavy and very weighty but thank god for the power of god but you know young people you know we don't talk about that because we just preach the gospel sometimes uh, you see somebody that comes out and talks about demons and talks about evil spirits and uh, they just know a little of this matter but uh, uh, they blow it up and you think uh, there is a lot in what they're saying but there's no personal experience but some of us have gone through the thick we have gone through the cloud we've gone through everything and uh, we've counseled people people that uh, they've said things uh, that will that will almost shake you people that li literally can't pray that those evil spirits they just oppose they resist they hinder the penetration of the word of god I was talking to a woman and this woman was not using jewelry she dressed almost like a Christian but I knew she wasn't saved and as I talked to her and I gave her the word of salvation again she said I understand everything you have said in my head and I said okay then let us pray he said I cannot pray I said but you know hell is real yes I know heaven is real yes I know uh, you know jesus can save yes i know then pray and let us uh, you know get rid of this thing so that you can call upon the lord and you'll be saved and she said i want to but i cannot now what do you do if somebody tells you that immediately i knew what was behind it that's that spirit resisting the penetration of the gospel and i said okay if you can't pray just kneel down i know what to do i can pray and i prayed for her five minutes five minutes and I said, now woman, open your mouth. You can pray now. I'm taking the hindrance out of the way. And my, my, that woman began to pray. And she got saved immediately. God saved immediately. We went to, we went to Bendel, say, some years ago. And uh, we got to a particular place. We were going to sleep overnight there. And think about this place we were going to sleep. Terrible idol worshipping. While we got there, the, uh, the mother was, uh, you know, running around uh, a particular uh, idol making the juju and that's the place we are going to sleep and you sleep in that place without the power of god you are in for trouble and you just you know they said uh, brasso and so went on missionary work or evangelistic work and now coming back now he discovers that he's not himself anymore you read the bible you can't understand anymore your heart is blank it's like a heavy stone in your heart and you're an evangelist and yet you don't know what is going on behind the scene and as this uh, woman was like that, uh, their, their child was deformed. And they said, we should pray for that child. I said, no, not yet. I said, uh, let the mother finish the idol worship and let her come here. And right before her eyes, this deformed child will be healed. And after that child is healed, I want her to forsake that idol. So we all waited, not singing choruses not uh, saying oh lord when we begin manifest your power 
all that is not necessary if you got ready and got prepared from home it is not the day that the athlete runs the race that he begins to warm up and begins to practice you practice many many months before that day and when that day comes you put on your suit you put on your garment and then you get ready if you didn't practice before that day it's a pity you cannot run and so she finished and when she finished with a smile i said a woman look at your child look at that idol you are worshiping and that that idol has not allowed this child to walk look at it i said if jesus heals uh, this child will you continue to serve the idol she said no i said okay let us pray she was right there and i said lord heal this child in jesus name and the people said amen and the boy got up and immediately immediately that the woman went to take the idol and threw it in the bush and said i'm not worshiping idols anymore <laughs> we called the father the father of the child we said now what are you going to do are you going to be the only idol worshiper in the house and the father said if my wife is not worshiping if uh, everybody is not worshiping i'm not going to be the black leg the goat of the house and throw away idols that's what we are talking about but you know if you do not understand the power of the lord the authority of the spirit and you just reach out like that you'll waste your lifetime a whole lifetime will be wasted and uh, you know sometimes uh, there is a spirit that just makes the people to be totally blank we've been in meetings uh, where we preach and preach and preach and it appears that the people are just not just getting what you're saying they want to understand they cannot understand something is blocking their mind and blocking their ears and and they're giving a blackout in their spiritual eyesight what do you do well come back to acts chapter 13 but Elamas the sorcerer for so is his name by interpretation we stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith now the evil spirits or familiar spirits or the sorcerers they try to pervert the way of the law by using falsehood or subtlety mischievous cleverness or deceit or magical arts they use evil spirit to uh, make the hearers turn away their ears from the faith now you look at this man he had a deceptive name and with his deceptive name he also had deceptive spirits he said his name was by jesus you know the meaning of that the son of jesus by jesus by jonah the son of jonah by jesus the son of jesus the son of salvation but G uh, paul said you are a child of the devil i know you you are not what your name says you are elamas means a wise man and this man was terrible occultic it was literally a medium by himself evil spirits and familiar spirits false prophets and demonized persons will stand and resist the penetration of the gospel and it is still so today and you know where these people are and they resist the gospel those who want to believe it becomes difficult for them to believe and i want to tell you that if uh, in your home there has been that activity of uh, evil spirits and evil powers you know when you come to church sometimes you try your best you want to believe but it's so hard for you and if you've been involved in fortune telling and palm reading and divination and uh, you know charming and uh, magic and all these evil things in the past now that you just come to church you know if you are not if you don't know what is really happening to you you'll just say well i don't believe i don't believe everything that is said there is something in you that is resisting it that that thing cannot penetrate you know why there is the activity of evil power evil spirit familiar spirit may not be in you directly may be working from outside you but then it is still there and it is still real and except uh, you are in a church that has the fire of the holy ghost and the power of the holy ghost and you are delivered you know you may spend years you know i've seen a uh, people for many many years and they were the desire to get saved desire to get saved have you seen somebody that is uh, you know a sinner and he doesn't like to sin he has been going to a gospel church 
and he has made all the restitution he knows he wants to make and sometimes he will punish himself and he will put a sand on the ground and will walk on it so as to be free from sin and people are getting saved in that church you know they just come they pray they get saved he will come he will pray he will cry and yet not get saved and he will say i want this word of god but he his heart will be stony will be very very hard and the word of god to get in it will not get in and when you counsel him you say ah what's happening to you well you know what he says i want to get saved then he begins to cry again and he cries and cries and cries five years it can be like that and if the church doesn't know what to do for him oh they will say okay okay god knows your heart wait for the time of god keep praying and he will pray again he'll pray in the night he'll pray in the day and then even people he invites to the church they'll hear the message like this but not from the same family from another family people that he invites they come into that place and in just about a month or so those people get saved radiant with the joy of salvation and he is still there he's still crying five years six years seven years why is it that the gospel message is not able to penetrate there is somebody standing behind the closed door holding on to the key saying no that gospel will not come in here we're standing the preaching and the penetration of the gospel oh if somebody has power in that church if somebody has authority in that church and will command that person that spirit that familiar spirit that is standing behind that closed door and walk him out of that place and open the door and let the gospel penetrate into that heart oh the people are suffering in the world but you know when you come to a place like this and there is power and authority you know my brother my sister a man that came some time ago long now and the devil tormented their house the wife uh, you know was uh, difficult the husband was difficult and when uh, the wife said she got saved that didn't bring peace into the house the man literally almost killed the woman throwing chairs at her and uh, somebody knew about it and she knew she couldn't help the man and brought the man to me it wasn't a church uh, meeting it was just ordinary uh, meeting uh, you know just casually meeting together and uh, when he came to me i knew just looking at his eyes somebody was behind that man somebody other than jesus other than the holy ghost other than the power coming from the throne of god wild terrible murderous just wanting to destroy the world looked at him and i excused the person that uh, you know that came along and i uh, said can i talk to you and he said yes and i started talking to him i had not finished until his knees knocked the ground and he started praying he prayed and got saved and started praying for me myself started praying for the wife and uh, their child at home was uh, very very sick that child could not walk and uh, i just went uh, later into that house that time she we had introduced him to a particular church at that time but uh, he went to the church the mother was at home because this child that thing was just behind that family and i just got into that house and i walked into that room with the authority and the power of the lord and i said uh, mother get her clothes ready because she is coming out now and uh, I got into that place and prayed for the girl. I said, girl, dress up and meet me at the sitting room. She stood up and uh, dressed up and met me at the sitting room. I said, now a church service is going on in town. So let us go to that church where the father went that evening. And I took that child there. When they finished church uh, meeting and uh, the father saw the child, the father almost fainted. The father thought that the child had died and he was seen, seeing the ghost. I said, no, that's your child. Jesus has raised her up. And you know, just recently, just uh, last year, I was a crusade at um, National Stadium. Not the one we had, other people were having it. I just walked in there to just see what is going on. And uh, somebody was greeting me, a young lady. So I looked at her. Then I said, oh, you are so-and-so. She said, yes, that's the girl that, you know, the Lord raised up that time. 
when uh, and then went to the evening church together and the father thought that uh, she had died i said where are you now she said i'm reading my postgraduate now you know she's gone to university she's come out she's done a youth service and now she's reading postgraduate the power of the lord but you know what of if you are just preaching the gospel you don't know about all these things we're talking about you are blank you just hear that uh, you know people are saying we're going out to preach the gospel and you don't wait in the church and be taught and be matured and be deep in the lord and you just reach out what will you do what will you do now in exodus chapter 7 exodus chapter 7 from verse 10 and moses and aaron went in unto pharaoh and they did so as the lord had commanded and aaron cast now his rod before pharaoh and before his servants and it became a serpent then pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers now the magicians of egypt they also did in like manner with their enchantment for they cast now every man his rod and became serpents now look up here before i read the part the rest of the verse suppose we went out and you say jesus can save jesus can heal jesus can deliver and then you, somebody is sick and then you lay hands on the person and the person got healed you think the people may just believe like that and they, then they come to the lord not always you know that he ran throughout the road he became a serpent now they were showing pharaoh saying god has sent us and because of what happened now won't you believe and allow the people of god to go he said that's a small thing he called these magicians sorcerers people with evil power he said uh, look at what this man has done he says one jehovah has met him now can you help me duplicate uh, that uh, thing that he did now oh they said that's a small thing and they brought their rods they threw their rod down and it became serpents you know the attitude of pharaoh he said so what you did where is the what was the difference because of that his heart was hardened and because of the activities of all these juju powers and evil spirits uh, all the people that hear the gospel instead of just responding and opening up to the gospel they become hardened but look at the rest of verse 12 but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods but he didn't give up because in the next miracle that happened when uh, moses uh, turned water into blood pharaoh still called them and said can you try again they tried again it became blood water became blood again so all the time in verse 13 he had in pharaoh's heart and uh, that he acting not unto them as the lord had said but look at chapter 9. now moses and aaron did what the lord told them to do and in verse 11 and the magicians could not stand before moses because of the boils for the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the egyptians that's power i said that's power Amen. and you know when that power of god is in your life they cannot stand those witches they may try those people having familiar spirit they may try but they cannot stand in jesus name Amen. we thank god for knowing the power of god the power of god and uh, when you are when you are preaching the gospel you better have the whole thing not just doctrine but the deliverance along with it the dynamite from above along with it the holy ghost along with all that you have you know i was invited to scripture union uh, meeting many many years ago many many years ago and uh, the organizer of that uh, meeting was uh, just put completely down he had he had organized the meetings and then invited some of us who were to preach and the organizer herself just was on the bed pain rheumatism terrible things from the very first day of that uh, camp meeting that we had she was totally down and so she couldn't actually do her part and eventually on a particular morning I, I asked her, where is the organizer? What's happening? All the other people said, well, uh, you know she's down. 
I said, what is all this? And all the other people said, you know, we will pray, you know that type of prayer. It will come down in a round circle, sit on chairs, bow our head, support our head, we'll find as if you have a dick, and uh, begin to mutter something as if uh, you have, uh, what do you call this thing that uh, troubles your teeth, that you cannot actually open your mouth and challenge the devil. But I wasn't going to be in a meeting like that. So I dashed into that place, and I entered with uh, one or two ladies, and I said, now lady, you are coming up out of this place. You organized the meeting, you brought us here. Now the meeting is going on, get ready. And then I just said, in the name of Jesus, you sickness and all demonic powers, get out right now in Jesus' name. And you know it was so, it was so. And she felt the power of God, and she came out of that place, and we walked back to the meeting. Until the end of the meeting, she was just completely all right. That's power. But you know, if you don't know anything like that, you don't know what to do, and uh, you are having a meeting like that, and all the people that ought to be in that meeting, the leaders and the preachers, they are totally down, and the whole weight is upon you. Oh, but thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul will not take that thing, and therefore he just came with real full force, apostolic authority and apostolic power. And in Acts chapter 13, I'm looking at verse 9. Then Saul who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Oh, there is a lot in that. There is a lot in that. He didn't close his eyes. He didn't bow his head. He didn't say, oh God, what are we going to do? He didn't begin to cry. Oh God, what is all this now? Oh, Jesus, come and uh, convince this man. No, it wasn't Jesus now. You have the power, you it. He opened his eyes, he looked straight at the face of the man, and he said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. You know, seminary college students, they don't talk like that. Psychology people, they don't talk like that. Those who don't know the power of the Holy Ghost, they don't talk like that. But Paul the Apostle, he looked straight at the man, and he said, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Have you ever seen any man like that? You know the meaning of Paul? Little. Little of stature. Looking at him on the physical, you, you won't know that there is spiritual uh, dynamite inside him. But it was there. And when Paul saw what that man was trying to do, to persuade and to lead the um, deputy away from the faith, he just looked at him and said those things, and then he proclaimed divine discipline upon him. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking who to lead him by the hand. What's the result? The deputy became persuaded. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. We thank God we are in a good church. We thank God we are in a place where there is a presence and the power of the Lord. And what we have studied today is uh, to tell every one of us that behind the various nations, behind various uh, governments and governors, many places of the world, there are powers unseen. There are forces unseen. There are spirits that control. And there are missionaries that have gone out. Those of us who have read missionary books, you've seen that uh, there are missionaries that have gone out and for six years, they had only one convert. They didn't know the secret behind that, the reason behind that. There are those people, as the people are coming in, they are not dependable. They do not know the spirit behind the closed doors, behind the closed minds of the people. And there are people that they, they work for so many years, so many years, and yet there is no abiding fruit. But oh, if they'll get into the power of the Almighty God, if they become full of the Holy Ghost, and if they become saturated with the power of the Holy Ghost, and they can take authority whenever there is any demonic or uh, any uh, spiritist uh, problem like that, the work will go on very well. Thank God for what we studied tonight. In your own surrounding, if you have been finding that the gospel message is, fine, is a little bit and uh, not penetrating, 
the face message, you've heard about the face message over and over and uh, the penetration is not there. You want to believe but it appears there's something drawing you back from believing that thing. Don't you know there is somebody, there is a spirit standing behind the closed door saying this thing will not enter? Maybe it's your child. You've done everything and you preached, you've done everything and uh, he'll appear sober as long as he goes to that school and those other children they influence him with uh, you know like this um, bad Jesus or uh, Elamas was trying to influence uh, Sergius Paulus he'll come back again hardened you should know there is something behind that you should know how to take authority or you as fellowship leader you area leaders and zonal leaders you know you've been trying your best and trying your best this area is growing this area is going this area is going and you are laboring in this particular place and um, uh, the thing is not just bearing fruit but then you realize in that area you know the juju there you know the works of darkness there don't you know there is somebody standing behind the closed doors but now I'm telling you tonight, with the power of the Lord, you can challenge that thing. Walk that thing away from, the, from behind that door. And then the door will open and the gospel will penetrate. Rise up and let us pray. Thank the Lord for what he's teaching us. Spiritual authority. Don't allow the devil or the evil spirits or familiar spirits or witches or wizards to do anything negative in your body, in your heart, on your family. Take authority. If you find the gospel is not penetrating as it ought to, there is something behind it. Walk that thing away from there.